Good evening and welcome back to CNN Money Switzerland. You're following our rolling coverage of coronavirus. I'm Olivia Chang. It's time to bring you up to speed with all the headlines. Switzerland's 20 billion franc program for companies hit by the coronavirus might be just a few days old, but the government is already conceding it may have to be expanded. According to the latest figures from the Secretariat for Economic Affairs, bridging loans amounting to 6.6 .6 billion francs have already been granted, or roughly a third of the total allocated by the Federal Council. SECO said in a press conference just today that discussions were taking place as to whether to ramp up the program beyond the existing 20 billion. Meanwhile, the Swiss government's count of people who have tested positive to COVID-19 has climbed to more than 15,000 on Monday. Just to give you an idea, that's up from over 12,000 on Friday. In total, at least 295 people have died. The Office of Public Health said the daily increase in cases was stable, suggesting this could be the first small sign that the government measures are having an effect, but cautioned it was still too soon to tell. And after enjoying one of its best years on record in 2019, tourism in Switzerland is bracing itself for a dramatic reversal this year. The industry is expected to lose as much as 6.4 billion Swiss francs in sales by the end of 2020, and that's roughly a drop of 18% on last year. That's according to a study by the University of Applied Sciences and Arts Western Switzerland, and also seen by Blick. Finishing up, EasyJet today grounded all 334 of its planes in Europe as a result of travel restrictions across the region. The budget airline said it could not put a firm date on when commercial flights will resume. It has already halted operations in Geneva, where the UK budget airline is in fact the biggest operator. Now, the International Council of Nurses says the lack of personal protective equipment is leading to an increase in coronavirus infections in frontline staff. My colleague Anna Maria Montero spoke to CEO Howard Catton. Here's what he had to say. How critical is the situation? How concerned are you? Uh, I'm really alarmed by what I'm hearing from around the world about the lack of personal protective equipment, PPP. I've been talking to associations uh, in Asia from the outbreak, the, since the outbreak of the virus, uh, and in recent days to uh, colleagues across Europe. Um, we are seeing an increasing rate of health worker and nurse is infections. 9% uh, last week I was hearing from Italy. In recent days, that's now at 12 or 13% in Spain. I've no doubt uh, that this increasing rate of infection is related to the lack of PPE supply. Um, I think it could even be a higher figure for nurses who are working in some areas like intensive care. Mm -hmm. And we're hearing a lot about nurses also reusing, repurposing used equipment because that's how bad it is. I, I think some of those stories show the reality of the front line, the lack of supply, but people's concern that they need protection. Our health workers absolutely should be prioritized. Their protection, their safety is paramount. Um, not just because it's the right thing to do for them, of course, but also this thing's going to run for a few weeks and months as yet. And we are at serious risk of exhausting our workforce, people getting sick, having to take time off, people suffering um, not just the physical demands, but also the mental and the psychological pressures that go with uh, this current crisis. And should countries then be doing, should countries then be doing more frontline testing? Uh, I think uh, the message clearly is test, 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 and health workers need to be a priority for testing, uh, obviously so we know whether they're safe to uh, work, um, but also so that we have a sense of just the, the scale of the, uh, the the virus and its spread as well. If we don't know that uh, whether health workers are positive or not, the risk is not only when they're at work, but when they're traveling to and from work, when they're at home, when they're going and doing their own shopping as well. There is a, a really important issue here about increasing the supply of PPE, manufacturers need to step up. But there are also some really important issues around distribution. And this, I think, is where 
government collaboration uh, across borders, border checks, making those uh, easier. The issue with flights hasn't helped as well in terms of distribution. So there's much more that needs to be done both in terms of manufacture, supply, distribution and prioritising those who need it most. Now, in a video on your website, you, you talk about how you took your concerns more than once to the WHO. And I'm wondering, what did Dr. Tedros, the director general, tell you? What was his response to your concerns about their safety? Uh, I, look, I believe that Dr. Tedros had been hearing um, the reality of the front line in the same way that I had as, as, as well. So he was, he was understanding, he was sympathetic. And I have seen in WHO's press conferences and their communications, they have been very, very clear about the importance of protecting the front line, the supply of PPE as well. I mean, there's a part that all of us can also play here as, as, as well. We need to prioritise people who need this. So uh, not everybody needs to be walking around wearing a mask. There's very good advice on the WHO website mm -hmm. uh, about when you need to wear a mask as well. And we also need to go really hard on some of these dreadful practices we've seen of people trying to hike the price or hoarding as, as well. We all have a responsibility here. The Winter Universiad is the largest winter sporting event outside of the Olympics. And Lucerne is due to host the next event in January 2021. My colleague Matt Layton spoke to the president of the Swiss University Sports Federation, Mike Kurt, and he's still confident that Universiad will still take place. Yeah, it is a big challenge. I and mean, first of all, it's now very important that uh, the, the health of all the athletes and uh, now these days we get uh, information of cancelled races every day. So it is obviously also really important to keep up the motivation and to believe in the fact that uh, there is a time after the crisis. And uh, I just see a big opportunity and chance at the moment that uh, the Universiade 2021 could possibly be the first multi-sport event uh, after the crisis. Uh, and this is a, an unbelievable opportunity. I saw a press release come out yesterday that you're planning to go ahead um, in, in the best possible circumstances. Are you meeting every day or who's making these decisions and how are you, how are you evolving? Yeah, obviously, as a national federation, we are in close contact with the, uh, with the OC, with the organizing committee. And uh, we will have now uh, these days, obviously, the, the whole world of sports is meetings on the on the on the phone all the time. And I mean, a very close contact with with uh, with uh, with the responsible people. And I think uh, what's really nice for me is that we feel now also the solidarity in the world of sports. I mean, we are a small family within the, the sports community in Switzerland, and it's really time to stand together and uh, and also work and, and keep the motivation for the time after the crisis. Speaking to you as a, uh, an ex Olympic athlete who is the, the president of the foundation and, and as a member of the public, how do you think the Swiss sports scene is uh, reacting to this crisis? Yeah, we are in a very special um, situation because again, all the big the big federations or most of the big federations are based here in uh, Lausanne in Switzerland, and we just came from a very positive uh, experience from the 2020 Youth Olympic Games. So really, uh, the last big uh, positive event before the crisis, and I think. The, the, the Swiss uh, sports uh, world is reacting well. We're really now focusing on uh, making everything that athletes uh, can get uh, good training condition, even though now the, the Olympic Games are cancelled. But it is, it is very important that the athletes have still the opportunity to train and that the life goes on. And also the government now uh, is investing a lot of money uh, into the sports system, helping the sports system. And in my perspective, the, the Swiss government is doing an excellent job and also gives us the, the, the feeling that there is, a, there is a crisis, but there's also a life uh, after the crisis and uh, things will be go back to normal, uh, hopefully soon. Mike, thanks and fingers crossed for the future. Thank you very much, Matt. 
that's you up to date. But just before we leave, I want to leave you with some very special images. In fact, of the Matterhorn where different messages are being illuminated during this whole period of coronavirus. You can see there on your screen at this point in time. Remember, you can follow all of our coverage in the meantime across all our channels from LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, you name it. And of course, you can stay up to date with all of our coverage and our live stream over at cnnmoney.ch. In the meantime, take care and we'll see you tomorrow.